My name is Timothy Pichet, and this is my video submission for Part 2 of Project 1 for ME31 with Dr. Jenkins. For the purpose of this video, all references I use will be listed at the end in order of appearance. The material that I chose for this project is pure copper. Copper is the 29th element on the periodic table and shares similar properties of being conductive, unreactive, and beautiful, along with its group neighbors, gold and silver. Now why did I choose copper? I chose it because I personally have a lot of experience making artwork using scrap copper material. As you can see, I make a lot of jewelry, as shown by the various necklaces bearing Christian imagery, and using copper wire is perfect because it is a relatively cheap precious metal. As a broke college kid, I can't afford to use gold and silver in my designs, and the beautiful color and easy shaping of copper fits the role just fine. I also use copper plating to make some cool designs with repose, and as rivets for steel projects. Now that's cool. However, as I began to research copper, I decided to take the approach of talking about the historical significance of copper. According to an article titled Copper, a Metal for the Ages, copper was discovered around 8000 BC. Copper is unique because unlike other metals, it has the ability to form as pure crystals in the Earth's crust, which allow for easy use by ancient peoples. At about 5500 BC, Ancient civilizations began to use the material to craft better tools and weapons. I then discovered that the first recorded use of copper was written on the Smith Papyrus in ancient Egypt, saying that copper can be used to treat chest wounds and purify water. I learned that copper has natural antibiotic tendencies and has the potential to kill microbes on the surface in under two hours. Since copper acts as natural antibiotic, it became an important part of the first aid kit of ancient peoples. Though copper and its alloys were eventually replaced in world history by iron and steel, it still remains one of the world's most used materials. I then came across this breakdown provided by the International Copper Association. I took the approach to compare and contrast how the properties of copper were used in the modern world as compared to the ancient. The first 45% of the world's copper use goes to the electrical grid. Second only to silver, copper is one of the most conductive metals in existence, making it an ideal material to use for wiring. Usually insulated by a resistive polymer coat, copper wire is the basis for electrification in the modern world. For the same reason of conductivity, 12.5% of the world's copper is used in appliances. The conductivity of copper allows for rapid heat transfer, making it an ideal material to use in cooking appliances, refrigeration units, and other electrical devices. The next 20% of the world's copper is used in construction, with much of the use going towards plumbing. Along with being antibacterial for drinking water, copper is interesting in that it corrodes in a protective way. It forms oxide layers on the surface, and those impurities actually make it more difficult for solutes to diffuse into copper that would upset its face-centered cubic structure. The next 10% of the world's copper goes towards miscellaneous uses. These can range from pots and pans to jewelry, and even much of the world's coin currency uses copper. For example, this penny from 1849 that I own contains 100% copper, although many modern coins use a combination of metals to cut down on production costs. The final 12.5% of copper goes towards use in transportation. Cars, planes, buses, trains, and other vehicles have many electrical components that require copper as a conductor. However, there are other uses still. Check out the clip in the attached references from a TED Talk by Colin Anderson on how antibacterial properties of copper are used in boats. Overall, this project and its corresponding research helped me to more appreciate a metal I already think is cool. The antibacterial, anti-corrosive, and conductive properties of copper have kept it extremely relevant ever since its discovery thousands of years ago. It piques my interest to see what will happen in the future for copper and how I can contribute to that development as an engineer. My name is Timothy Pichet, I like copper, and as always, thanks for watching.